good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome on into the Dragon's Den. Apologies for being a minute or two late getting started here. Uh, welcome on in, everybody. Mr. Wizix, Da Vinci, Timor, uh, Wook Allen. Why not because? Hybrid Robotics, welcome on in. Good morning from sunny and cold downtown California. Good morning from sunny and cold rural for North Carolina. It's uh, 48 degrees out right now. It was 39 when I got up and started my day. I had to go up to my neighbor's house and feed their cats, which, by the way, I'm allergic to cats. So, uh, we, we had to take an allergy pill. This is all good. It's all good. All good. I'm allergic to them, but I still love them. Green coffee bean order arrived. Yesterday, 250 pounds of Tomatrin. Nice. That's going to be a long, long day to you. Now, when you say vacuum packed in one and a half pound Mylar bag, are you just vacuum packing it in smaller bags to ship, or do you have to roast it, then package it? Because that's going to be a completely different thing there. Um, but welcome on in. Good morning, everybody. We've got our coffee. And yeah, we've got our KB3D coffee cup to go with our hat and our shirt. Filling all the way. You didn't type that. Well, yeah, yeah, you did. Um... Old what, New York? How you doing in New York? Uh, you know, I hear the ground kind of moved a little bit uh, day or so. But yesterday. Yeah, roasting's definitely going to add an extra ton of time. Oh, nice. You might be attending TwitchCon. That would be cool. Why not? Because I would like to get to something like that. I don't think I'm anywhere big enough to be doing something like that yet. Um, primarily just looking at the cost and the cost of going to Rocky Mountain, Murph, 3D Printopia. It's not going to be prohibitive, but it's more of time out of work and burning PTO and stuff. That's good, why not? Gotcha. There you go, Timor. That makes sense. You're just gonna go, yeah. Well, and it would make sense to go to TwitchCon if I was closer because it's in Vegas, right? So if I was closer, could just get up and drive to it, that would be one thing. But this would be a whole nother trip at an end for the year. And I just, I don't have PTO to burn past the three um, shows. San Diego, okay, same thing. But yeah. Definitely welcome on in, everybody. And like I say, I, I kind of sort of jokingly say, you know, going for KB3D. I have no problem showing off KB3D merch and, you know, the hats, the, the mug and everything because of all the things that KB3 has done for me specifically, but for the maker community as well. He's supporting a lot of different makers out there and their products are fantastic and some of the stuff we're going through today is me actually building my own wiring harness for black box to get us moving because one of his suppliers has not uh delivered the wiring harness. so once again uh, no fault of kb3ds just the you know the issue of trying to spin up a new product line and, you know, we've seen it on this build. We've had some issues with the T-nuts that came from the supplier. Uh, almost half of those that he got from the supplier were M5, slot 8, which is the 4040 series T-nuts, um, which he, he has no use for. He uses M4s. So that was, you know, a, a quality control thing from his vendor. And those, those mistakes had up.
Okay, there you go. Why not? Yeah, and Remurf for me is gonna is getting more and more expensive by the day because me and Evil Diesel are flying out. So Mrs. Dragon is going to drive starting what uh he comes back on Thursday and then by Monday she's starting to drive out um taking some printers and stuff for the show. Um, then me and Evil Diesel are flying out Friday morning, partly because I'm not good at the altitude with my asthma. We we know the uh, the limits of my health, so we're flying out on the 19th, and meeting Miss Dragon, and heading up to the show. We'll do the show. Then that Monday after the show, we get up, we go down to Aurora, pick up a U-Haul. And load it with some stuff from my mother-in-law and drive back. So if it was a fly there, fly back, no problem. I burned like one, maybe two days of leave. But now I'm tracking on like a three or four day drive and the cost of the vehicle and everything else on the way back. So that's going to put a damper on some of the things. It is what it is. So thanks for my sponsors, uh, KB3D. Thanks for people like Fabrico and LDO Motors Jason who helped with kits and other things over this life as well. And I want to say don't just thank product sponsors. Right? Reach out and support each other. Right? Um, some of you may know I hounded on Make My Mind Nexus. He came up with some shirts. But he wasn't going through stream elements or anything like that. So I kind of hounded him of, hey, you're making up these shirts. Just get your logo out there on stream elements. You can add a plethora of different types of things and people can order them. That way you're not having to order shirts and then try and sell them at a show or something like that. So if you can, you know, go out and support each other. This is a Make of Mine Nexus cup, and I will say. It's already got a war wound right here. You probably can't see it. It's right by my finger. I dropped it while I was trying to wash it for this morning and tipped the cup already. Um, but this will make an appearance again on a weekday stream. But since we're doing black box and everything, I am trying to keep with the KB3D theme. Um, so, Timor, I'm not even sure if we're going to stay in hotels the whole time, depending on the weather and everything. We may try and drive straight through since it'll be me and Evil Diesel, um, or we may just stay in a rest area and catch a couple of Zs here and there. We'll see. We'll play that by ear. But the, the nice thing is it's a 15-footer. I'd prefer to get the, I think they've got a 10-footer the 10 footer i don't need the 15 footer hell i don't need a 10 footer um i'm bringing back a oh to my knowledge as of this moment i'm bringing back a day bed with a bundle bed with it and a family heirloom like big piece of furniture style uh stereo system that was this is dragon's grass so, and whatever I call back, Earth, new projects. I, you know, I'm going to have space. And if I have space, there's an opportunity to fill it. So we'll see. But today we've got Black Box back up here on the desk. And as I uh, mentioned and alluded to before, I spent some of Thursday night, and by the way, I apologize for not streaming Thursday. There were some things going on. My head was not in the right space to stream on Thursday night. Um, and I, I sat down and tried to do some wiring. And even that was, I will say, very painstaking and methodical because I'm going off of a wire map diagram. You say, what the hell is a wire? 
be I not? Oh my what? Let me see if I download it here on the roll. Private roll. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just take a quick look at the, okay, there. So let me throw you guys over here to the point. Hey, good morning, Creatix Brit. How are you doing, nerd? You're doing well? And by the way, when I say that, I do mean that very loving. Creatix, I myself am a nerd. So, all good. So, if you go through and download the black box files from the GitHub through the full zip download, um, you will have the uh, basically you're cloning the repo. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're going to get into some wiring too. And at first, you would think that the wiring mapping would be under the guides. Uh, but this is all the build manuals that we've been going through. Um, the wire mapping is actually under the DWGs. Oh, hey, Mr. Wizzix. Thank you for ordering a t shirt off of a, let's see, a t shirt and a Digital Dragon sticker. Thank you, kind sir. I really do appreciate that support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I will have stickers, um, some that you can get off the store um, because I did order a few of those. And the ones that I had made up that just don't have my name on it, they just have my logo um, that I made up last year for a couple of the shows. I will be having some of those and some earth and all the shows. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, back over here to the full display. So under our DWG folder, line folder, where you can get the actual drawings. So if you decide you want to make some of the aluminum parts for black box, you can come here and actually you have all of the requisite dimensions in there to machine out your own parts or send them off to have them machined. Um, if like you're going along and you're like, oh, I, I've changed my mind. I need another one of these, these six tool heads, but I'm under a deadline and I'm overseas and I'm, no, I'm not going to get it from KB3D in time. You can take this down to one of your local fab shops and provide them this drawing, and get, you know, get a part that you, so that's, that's kind of cool that they provide that information. So the wiring harness, this is what I've been building a wiring harness. Uh, this is the joy to work with. If I can. I get this. So. What you're doing here is you're looking at each piece and you're saying, okay, the power inlet, I need a, a line jumper that goes from the power inlet with a female spade connector to the power switch with another female spade connector. It's going to be eight centimeters long. It should be at a minimum 18 gauge wire and it's black. Is it a motion system? Yes or no? So here's the thing. If it says no, technically, 
you are good to go to use things like silicone wire. If you're feeling really skippy, and I really wouldn't suggest it, for non-motion things, you could even use non-stranded, aka single conductor, you know, hardware like you would see in phone construction. I wouldn't suggest that I would always go stranded in our applications, but you could. If it has a Y here, we see on the line wire for the load, it goes from the SSR for the port connector to the heated bed Wago, which will be on our Wagos up on the bed. And it says bare wire. Um, it could be bare wire. I'm putting ferrules on mine. Um, but this is going to be 86 centimeters or 860 millimeters, right? Once again, minimum of 18 gauge in black. This is how you can go through and build out your individual wires of your. I will tell you, I do not have all of these done. I have a good majority of these. Um, so the, whoops, the power inlets done, the solid state relays done, the heated bed Legos um, are done. The next bolt offset switch has been done. The five volt DC converter is done. The 12 volt DC done. The power for the duet boards has been done. The wire pump wires have been done. Play has been done. The tool docks, I've done a couple of them, right? I ran out of 20 gauge wire. So I've got more uh, wire on order, and that shipped out today. It'll get here, um, I think it was Tuesday. Finish out these. Now, pay attention. These have lengths of like 136 centimeters, right? That's 1,360 millimeters. So, you know, make sure that you... Do the math, do the right calculations, to get the right length on these. The last thing you want to do is cut one short and have already done all your short wires and now you have to burn some more. Uh, the enclosure lighting was done. FDM tools, I've got three of those made up. Well, two made up, one that I got from Chris. Sorry, came in. Um, on the tool head, this is the X gantry carriage. Um, the motors, I have wire on order. Um, for the E motor, the T motor, the X end stop, I haven't made up yet. I think I need the green wire. Um, the Z end stop, the tool lock end stop, and the part fan, I've created these. The Y end stop, I created that. The B motor, which is 61 centimeters, was done. The Z motor, which is 17 centimeters, is done. We'll need to do the R. So I've got a lot of these done. We're going to go ahead and install what I've got done today. And then, uh, depending on what time it is, we may go ahead and continue doing some wire. And I'll go through and show you the process. So this is the wire mapping. Now, if you're looking for a wire guide like LDO, where you have the pretty graphic and the lines that go around, we don't have those yet. And I'm not sure if that's in the works or not. This is more of the wire harness map that's going to be used to facilitate building the cables by Lineo. And I'll show you how I went through and was marking my. By the way, how is everybody doing this fine? Everybody's doing good. Um, that was the one thing. The other thing that I was doing was going over to the Duet mainboard or the Duet3D.com site, and I pulled up 
uh, you know, you go into products, and I know we have a 6HC, a Duet 3 6HC. Scroll down a bit, and under documentation, hardware overview, click that, and it'll open up a new window into their kind of wiki page here. And you can scroll through and see like the pin out wiring diagram. If you click on that, it will once again open up and show you that diagram. You click on that and it will give you a little bit easier to read diagram. Complete with the legend that helps you determine whether it's ground, um, VN is whatever voltage you're putting into the board, 12 volt, 24 volt, or higher. Um, the blue purple here is 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, VSSA, um, input output, thermistor, PWN, VN, message in on your PWN fans or other PWN devices. Voltage out LC. This is a jumper setting and it can either be the voltage you're applying to the board or 12 volt. You know, um, PWM uh, voltage in for the fans, stepper motors, um, so on and so forth. So this is what we're really using as well to go through and look at the diagram and make sure that we get our wires set up. Now, I will tell you that what I did, I was sitting over at the desk and I just did this. These were said and done. I took the board off, put it in that same orientation, and just sat it on my desk like that. And so when I needed to say, you know, when I was building out the wires, and it says it goes into IO0, IO0, get a, so, So IO0 is down here in the bottom right, which is right next to the Ethernet connector. I would actually, you know, dig out the connector, set it on the part or on the board. So when I was, I would build out my wires and then I would look at this and I would look at that diagram and say, okay, the ground's right in the middle. So then I'd put the ground in and then work my pins in. And that way I knew that I had the right orientation of the, of the wires going into the connector, right? So that's, that made it easier for me. Having this sitting on the printer was a little bit harder. Um, so I just picked the board off, put this on the desk, and I would find, set the right connector on to whichever pin I was using and look at the pin outs. Some of these boards, um, like you can see your, your I.O. boards have the ability for either a 3.3 volt or a 5 volt. Um, you need to know what components being connected so that you get the right um, voltage in there. And it's just take your time, go through, make sure you're putting it in the right place. Know that if you're connecting a, like you're connecting an end stop in, to an I.O. 4 port. Um, you're using ground and a signal pin. Well, by, by default, you're triggering at an end stop, which means the signal's coming in. Going out would be I'm sending a signal to whatever components at the other end. That helps you understand which way to do your wiring. Um, I believe these are one starting at the so you've got wiring notes on here if you keep scrolling down because i was having some problems 
trying to figure out, okay, which way does this go? On the specs here, here's your I.O. headers. So one, pin one is a 3.3 volt. Pin five is the five volt. So that helps you when you're looking at your wire map because your wire map is telling you what pin number to use. So look at the documentation, figure it out. Um, when you're doing your, uh, like you've got a regular end stop, a regular clicky switch Omron end stop, right? We've got one of those on our tool head for the Z. Um, we actually need to solder some connectors. That is just ground and a signal pin. But our Hall effect sensors, aka the black stops we have for the Y, the tool locking mechanism, XX. Um, I think those are the three. Um, I'm thinking there's another. At least those three. These are three pins. They have to have power. But is it 3.3 volt or 5 volt? Well, if you understand the pin outs, when it calls for those, so the the Y in stop, three wires here, red, green, and black. So at the end stop, when you do the JST, you have pin one, which is red, pin two is green, pin three is black. And you're looking at this JST connect, you go, which one's pin one versus I know black or uh, green, the signal's going in the middle. Well, which side do I get, put the red and the black on? Last thing you want to do is fry one of these. So, once again, do, do the needful. Come in here and just do black stop. Is there a black stop? Um, definitely not uh, animation. What do I do? Black stop. KB3 News. Hey, zombie, welcome on in. How are you doing this morning? The shrimp father, welcome in. So, if you come down here on the black stop uh, on KB3D's page, you scroll down here, there's a learn more here. Click that, and here's the guide to the black stop hall effect in stops. And you scroll through, scroll through, scroll through. Hey, there's a nice pretty picture that shows VN. Which and ground. Now you know which is pin one on these. There is no positive negative signal marking on these. So a quick search and you can find the information and ask on Discord. You know, use your resource is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at as far as doing our build outs. I just Realize I'm so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started on doing some wiring. Hey, good morning, Royal Nomi. How are you? And I know that everybody's probably been a little bit concerned because they have not seen. Duncan, oh, just be aware, I did make a Duncan run this. Morning. It's the first one since Miss Megan's been gone, but I did get a Duncan run in. Um, I'm going to turn this 90 degrees so that you guys will probably be able to see a little bit more, or I might bring you guys in on the.
Yeah, I think I'm going to bring you guys in. If it'll work with me today. Better view. A little bit. At least here I can move it around and show things off a little bit easier. Um, but when I make comments like I was making wiring, uh, I do mean that I was making up some wiring. Wiring. Now, if I get this all from uh, our good folks over at uh, Lineo, of course, it'll probably be all black wire, which will go really nice. Um, but I was following the wiring diagram and going with black, red, green, what have you. Um, I am not, let me say this one more time, I am not building my own um, wires for motors because I hate, with a passion, JST PH connectors, the ones that are used on the six pin connectors on the motor end. So I am buying some three meter long cables. It'll take a while to get here, but I'm not expecting this to be done before Rocky Mountain anyhow. So the fact that those will be coming in after Rocky Mountain, I can live. So how's everything going, zombie? You get everything printed? You stress yourself out yet? Okay, I got all of my slot covers off. And what we're going to do is start with the outlet. Like, what do I do with the outlet? So, we get a bare outlet with switch. And we do, do need to go ahead and do our wiring for switch. Um, now you will see that we're going to use fork connectors and go directly into our power supply. And then when we pull power from the power supply, or excuse me, the, the neutral from the power supply, we go up to the bed and the live or load from the power supply to go to the SRR, SSR that we're going to be doubling up our spade connectors, port connectors on our power supply. I still may change that out. Um, I know in talking with Chris, he said the lineal harness um, on a lot of these connectors, they'll double up the wires in a single port connector because once again, they're using FEP instead of the silicone. Kind of hard to do it with the silicone wires because the Seething, the insulation is so much thicker than on a FEP wire. Um, and there was thoughts of, you know, do we use Wagos, which is also an option. However, when we go to put in our um, power switch here, you will note that the um, th there's not really enough room or an easy place to put them illustrate that. I'm going to go ahead and set this in here. Now, this kind of violates some things for me. I really like being able to reach around and go down and shut the printer off. The only way I could do that with this orientation is to install my switch like this, which means um,
This side of the printer facing me is the front of the printer. This is the left side. The lower left side is where the switch is going to be. Okay. So if I want that orientation where the off switch is down, that switch is going to sit in here like this orientation, which means the plug is going to be in front of the switch. Now I could pop this switch out, flip it over, so that when I put it in this way, the um, you know down's going to be in the right direction. But just be aware of how your wiring goes when you do that. Um, just something to be aware of. So this is going to be reversed for my liking, but I may switch that later on. I'm going to take this and just feed it through. The, do something real fast. Turn the printer around. Cool. There we go. So Switch back our view. Go switch the computer. Okay. So we put in our uh, electrical box here last time. We just haven't gone in and actually installed our switch because we needed to gen up our wiring. Now that our wiring's ginned up, take your wires and slip them through the the box. Pull them out of the way, and this should be a pretty snug fit. And it's a press fit. One of those press fits that it ain't coming back out once you do it. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but there's an awful lot of wire here. And my three uh, connectors are like literally right, right here. I could, I could cut these probably that much to make these wires good. This is the first time I fitted it. I made these wires to the length prescribed. So this would be where I could literally cut these, take it right into a Wago, come out of the Wago to the power supply and then use the, the Wagos to bring the load to the SS, SSR and around and up for the bed. Okay. Um, now I've got that in, I'm gonna flip the printer on its side and I'll kind of show you some of the wiring in the space constraint. Oh, and down you go. Hammer down. Sorry, folks. I'll get you squared away here in a second. I'll get you guys squared away in a second. Apologies for that. I have a feeling we're going to do that a couple, three times today. Need to switch the camera view to show you what I'm trying to show. So here's our power supply right here, our power supply, our uh, power switch, and right here is our power supply with our line neutral ground. This is how much wire we have. We've got plenty of wire. Um. Kind of not sure why it specs out this much wire. If we're just going right here, we could do this with a lot less wire. Um, now, another thought, like I was saying, is 
we could mount some Wagos here, come out of the switch into the Wagos, out of the Wagos, back to the um, power supply, and then out of the Wagos to go to the bed. And I think that's what I'm going to wind up doing. And yes, that is going to be a good revision for the manual. Some of this I've already sent back to KB3D Chris. One of the other things that I have noted to him that I will explain to you guys is for the tool uh, docks themselves and how things get wired up for the tool docks. Um, and some other suggestions I have, like it calls for separate power wires to come around, down, and over and a separate power wire to feed each one of the converters, it would make a lot more sense to put a Wago down here at the bottom. Right, so um, rather than bring two wires all the way around here to feed in, bring one wire down, put Wagos, and then come into our two um, converters. Here's a Wago mount that I found that'll work. Uh, it allows for three uh, Wago 220, was it 221, 413s? So the, the three version. I don't need three, you know, three of them, but it'll give me an option later on. I can mount this right down here underneath the bottom. Bring my one set of wires in and then feed both of these off that. So that's probably what I'm going to do there. For this one, we may be able to do the same thing, except as you can see, we don't have as much space to work with. If I go like this, um, now my mains wiring is sort of exposed out the back. If I go like that. It'll keep my mains wiring from direct hand contact, especially since I'm going to be reaching back here to flip a switch on and off. Um, so this might be how I mount this. It's it'd be a tight fit, and actually that's not going to work because I can't get this lug down far enough. I would have to modify this file to make a notch in it so that. It'll fit right next to our EF10 block and still be able to mount. Um, yeah, so that is definitely something that's doable. Make a quick modification of this file, print it out, and then I'll be able to come from the switch. The Wagos, from Wagos into the power supply, and everything to go to the bed. So that's something that we're going to do. Um, so I, I may hold off on doing the power. Also, once again, your power is, for the most part, non movable. So you can use silicone wires. And that's how I did mine up, was with silicone 18 gauge wire. Um, I may change these over to the Lineo FEP wire that I have. I just haven't decided yet. What I will do is go ahead and install this stuff. And if I decide to switch it out, then I will switch it out. But you will see that I do have heat shrink labels on here. Now these ones haven't been uh, shrunken down yet because I was trying to decide if I was going to change my mind on the on the type of cable used. But I actually say this is the 12 volt to the PSU. So this is coming from the 12 volt going to the PSU. So this will be the side that connects to the 12 volt converter. This side says PSU to 12 volts, so this end starts at the PSU and goes to the 12 volt, right? 
that's how I was doing my wiring. What I'm going to do is install all the wires that I have other than the power, and then I'll come back and do the power later because the power is the stuff that I'm probably going to make some adjustments to. Like I said, add a Wago mount here, make these go into the Wago, out from the Wago to the power supply, and then from the Wago, you make the bed connections, and then a Wago down here to bring power down and then connections. And actually, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and just install this one down here and use the 12 volt or the 5 volt, whichever is longer, whichever works best. I'll make that round or that run and cut the ends off, go into the way goes. Then I'll remake these. So, kind of where we're going to be at. I'm not going to do the main CSU connections yet. I'm going to hold off on that because I will be redoing those connections and I will do that way go there to take care of that. So I guess while we're down here, let me go ahead and do the run. Do the Trying to make it easier to do it now here. Five volt converter. Bumper. So we've got cables for the 12 volt and the 5 volt converter. And the way that they're made is the 12 volt is a little bit shorter than the 5 volt. Right? This is the 5 volts, the longer, 12 volts, the shorter. That kind of tells you which order these go in. Now, the diagram when we were putting our electronics in shows the 5 volt in the middle between the SSR and the 12 volt, but the 5 volt is the longer cable. And uh, so it would make sense that these two get swapped. So we either need to swap the 5 and 12 volt designators in the or the links in the guide in the mapping or reverse the 5 volt and 12 volt in the diagram when you lay out the electronics. You know, something like that. I think what I'm going to do, because I'm going to put my Wago down here, is we're going to use the the cable that would go to the 12 volt or the middle um, connector here. And that's what we'll connect up first. So the stuff that we're connecting to the power supply we're going to have from a 1224 volt. Um, we've got our 12 volt, or so our two buck converters basically. Um, we would have the control board, and then the two control boards are daisy chained together. So that's one connection here, two, three. We've got three connections. Um, should be good. I is there another one? Might be another one that I'm not thinking of. Nine line. We'll see. We'll get to it when we get to it. But once again, you're not gonna have a like wire routing guideline. So we're going to look at this. We're going to look at how things would most likely route through our cross to get to done. And we'll go ahead and get these put in place. Get the right screwdriver. Once again, we're going to do away with two wire runs down here. We're just going to bring one wire down to a Wago, and then we'll go off of that. So the
And by the way, um, our line neutral and ground are, are these three over on this side. So that even makes more sense to come over here to the way go. Um, I think this way or I'm going to go ahead and put the printer back up on its feet. Before I do so, I'm going to move you guys out of this camera. Put this over on feet, making some room to give me the ability to tilt. And I cannot express to you how heavy this is starting to get. You're going to be working right down here. You're going to, you're not going to be able to see because of where the 2060 frame is. But 12 volt 2 PSU. Come in here and Positive. Sure those connections are nice and good. And then we're going to come down through our cable trough and work our way all the way around through our cable trough. Now, technically, this should come down and go to our 12 volt PSU, which would be right here. Um, I'm just going to leave this kind of dangling through our cable trough for now because once again we're going to put this in a wago that's up underneath and then we'll make our connections back to our uh, buck converter no okay so that one's put in place let's continue on our other power wires which once again 3HC to the 6HC. And this is going to go from our 3HC and it's going to join with the power input. It's going to go from this board over to here. So this is where you may want to look at your diagrams. Not that you may want to, you definitely want to look at your diagrams for your boards to figure out your positive and negative polarities. So we've got the 6HC up. Let's pull up the 3HC. Product six HC do it three three HC expansion board. Do the same thing. We'll scroll down to the documentation. Click on that to open up the new diagram. 
gives us effects and everything. Physical properties. Physical connect. Here's our diagram for the three eight. What we're looking at is our power in. So our power in connector. The left side, the size closest to the 15 amp fuse, is our power and then the ground. So power then ground. We're going to grab the side that's 3HC, 26HC, and that will go in here first. Head test, make sure it's nice and solid. Hey, Glendon, welcome on in. Just over here chatting and, and working on installing some wiring. So this is a, a digital dragon made wiring harness. This is not the one that's going to be coming with the kits that we made by Lineo. So, and I'm making my power connections because they're non-movable or not motion rated required. Um, I'm making my uh, power cables using silicone wires. Um, I may go back and swap this out for FEP wires. That's one of the reasons why I haven't uh, heat shrink the tubings on here. Because um, I'm thinking I might get a little bit better ability to route the wires easier if I use the FEP wires. So, but we'll see. Just haven't decided yet. We've got the power on the lugs for the 3HC. We're going to come over here and look at our 6HC and know that our power in is the center of the board next to a capacitor here. So make sure you, you pay attention. Whoops to which connection you're doing. Ground is next to the capacitor. Voltage N is next to that. That's, that's something that we need to be aware of because when we do our connectors here, we need to make sure one, that our connectors are facing down so we get the best connection possible with our, um, when we add in our other wire, because we're gonna be daisy chaining these two together um, this is another reason why I might go with FEP, because if I do FEP, I'd be able to run them both into the same connector a lot easier. We're going to grab our 6HC to PSU connection. And once again, if you don't have it, if, but you have a brother P-Touch label maker, go get some of the heat shrink tubing. So you can make some really nice cables. So I got wordy here. This says 6HC to PSU. I could have just said, you know, PSU or something like that. But I'm trying to differentiate between which connector on which board and what the, the end is. And I don't care that my labels are long and verbose. So once again, the wire right next to the capacitor is the ground which makes the other one the um, power, one that has my labels on it. So also you'll notice when you do your port connectors, if I can get a good view here. You see when you crimp that, how it's sort of offset? So whenever you're doubling up connectors, you want to take those two flat sides, put them together. So one goes down, one goes up. And when you cinch this down, they'll lay flat against each other and you won't have any issues on your connection. 
This one coming from the power supply going into the 6HC is going to be facing up, meaning the flat is at the bottom side. And then when I do the other one, the flat will be at the top side like this. And that way I can get a good solid connection on the terminal. Those are good. Now we need to do the same thing for the negatives. And we'll fix our wiring so I Bring you all in here a little bit closer. Once again, our negative. Negatives go together. And I put all of my um, labels on the positive side. And once again, helps me identify that I'm on the right side of the connector.
Negatives are done. Not be this hard and fiddly, but sometimes it is. And so some of my comments that are going to go back to Chris will be, you know, hey, we need to add another centimeter or two here, or hey, this was way too long. We need to make this shorter. Um, made the comments about, you know, hey, let's. Let's take a page out of the um, forum and else that's using Wagos, and you know, let's use Wagos to reduce the overall number of wires that are running in these wire talks. That and it saves on wire. Was going in so much easier because the other one fell underneath. Definitely make sure you have all of your wires that you're trying to get in there. In there, start screwing things down. And also, one thing to note is the um, the duet boards come with all the required fasteners, and that includes these fork terminals. I didn't realize that, and I used my own fork terminals. And they're a little tight on these screws. They still work just fine. Nothing wrong with them. But the ones that came with the board would probably be a little bit better to use than the ones I'm using here. That and I think we're running into a little bit of just tightness issue because I'm trying to do two connectors on the terminal. This is a single connector, wouldn't have been an issue. Just that again off stream. We'll take our our uh, connector here that goes back to our power supply, and 
we need to just be aware and cognizant that we can't go up and over, so we have to go under and over. So one of the things that I'll do is just do this under. And also be cognizant that we've got a rod there, and we don't want to go around the rod. We want to go above the rod. We're basically going to route our wire over into our cable management trough. Find a slot, route it into a slot. It is easier said than done sometimes. There we go. Bring it underneath, route it back into our cable trough. Come forward, up above the piece that comes above our pulley, into the cable trough here, and then over. And this is way massively. That's another spot where we can do with a lot less wire. That's something to be cognizant of to tell the crevice. There's a part of me that wonders if the if this wire was actually meant to go to the 6HC and then this one comes here. I don't know. We'll look into that as well. Because I don't see why you would run this cable up here, come under, and then come all the way back just to make this connection. You want these things to be as short as possible. Routing power fully up and down through here with a lot of signals just causes you undue pain and chances for EMI. So that's a good thing to note is that this can be a lot shorter. I'll figure out what this length is and give that feedback to Chris. Okay, let me go back to my wire map, the kind of work my way. Power switch is done. To an extent. The solid state relay, so. With these out of the way. state relay Here's some of the other wire we've got. So on our SSR, we've got our load, load two, our trigger. So we need to go our uh,
keep that to the SRR. I don't get that out of the way. PSU to SRR. Here we go. So remember, when you're going PSU to SRR, this is the um, this will be your um, PSU load to SRR, right? Once again, we made our cable that says SRR. One SRR to PSU line load and then PSU load to SRR. So we're going to mount this or we're going to connect this to our uh, SSR, bring it down here, and we're going to leave the other end undone for now because we're either going to have to you know, join our two cables together on the main board or do a Wago. And I haven't just completely decided that. And our I'm trying to think the uh, load in is one on the SRR, correct? And then load out comes out of the the second I believe that is correct. So this goes to the way I'm oriented is going to be the left side or inside edge of SRR, the outside edge. Around the other Okay, so that's plugged in and wrapped around. And let me double, triple check what I was thinking there. Load goes into two, so the other side. Oops.
Okay. That one's done. This is our SSR trigger. So we've got a positive and a negative side on these. Just need to make sure we get them lined up correctly with positive and negative on the um, SRR. And our trigger goes to the 6HC and the output 3. Once again, make sure we're going over the rod. Go ahead and bring this under because I don't think we're going to make it any other way. And output 3 going to be over here. Oops. Which camera? There we go. Um, so output three on our diagram. Is all the way down here in the bottom left. So right next to our screw hole. So this is output three right down here. And we are defused. So the, the input fused or a red wire would be down closest to the screw. The brown wire would be towards the other end of the board. And we line up our connector. Push that on. Now we would be able to come back here and do some wire management. Once again, now that we've got our cable up underneath, let's figure out how to make it nice. Tuck it in. Now, I don't want these too tight, but I do want to try and keep them, you know, as straight and out of the way as possible. So there we've got our trigger from the high output out going around to our SSR. The Power connection from the SSR coming back around, and we'll connect that in with the load wire from our, um, what you call it, the part or the uh, switch. So we're getting 110. Once again, if I do a Wago underneath there, we'll just do it into the Wagos. Um, the other one I have here is this will be the. ESU neutral that goes up to the bed. Do that in a little bit, maybe. We'll have to find the rest of the bed stuff. To, this is going to go up and through our cable chain and down.
see if our cable chain will play nicely with this. Open all of our connections. Feeding this through the just feeding this down through the cable chain bed. I could and should have just made it easier on myself. Open the door and jump. You know, why, why do things the easy way when you can make it twice as hard on yourself? For no other reason than apparently you're first cable in our cable chain. Now, our cable chain has a circle right. Our connections, I believe, are going to go through that circular opening. We'll have a spot here where we can zip tie our wires. And we just need to figure out in what order we're going to do things. But for now, I'm just going to leave this kind of exposed. Bring this, once again, down into our cable chain. This around. And once again, so we've got the bed neutral and the SRR load. We can go ahead and tap these in along with our wires here, or we can hold off for a short bit, which I'm going to hold off on for right now. And then once again, we'll have our neutral, we'll have our um, SSR power coming up to the top. This is the SSR to heat bed. So once again, this is going to have to come up and down. See if we get that uh, also come down nice here without do too much. Um, we have not freed any angry pixies just yet. We are just routing the wires that I created over the last day or two. 
So no freeing of angry pixies just yet. Um, like I said, I am being somewhat of a masochist in the fact that I am trying to route this through the cable chain without actually opening up the cable chain, which, you know, of course makes it harder than it has to be, because why not, right? Why? This one's going to come over and go to our SRR. That one into the SRR on the load side. Bed power runs will be done. Once again, since we're coming up and going through cable chain, we definitely need to make sure that we're using cable that's rated for cable chains. This is our load. Seems to be a little bit longer of a cable, so we can bring it down some. The one thing we got to remember is we're going to have neutral load thermistor, which is two wires, and then uh, our ground. So I'm going to do or I think ground I'm just going to make that go straight through and the you may just plumb the um, fuse through the way it goes. So in other words we just brought the load up we would take one leg of the of the ceramic fuse into the load the other into the next way go, and then the load line from the bed into that way go. And that gets me our jumper. And then we do thermistors. And then that way the ground goes directly from the bed all the way down through. So I've done that before. We can just do the straight jumper on the load between the ceramic fuse and the load wire. Bring the other load wire here, then we're uh, thermistor, thermistor, and ground. Some people say break the ground. Some people say don't ever break the ground. I, I don't know which way to go. Quite honestly, the wiring diagram that we've been, or the wiring uh, mapping that we've been using and looking at does not even talk about bed ground. Hey Pez Liz, welcome on in. Raycore Justin, welcome on in. Yep, just under two weeks to Murph, or Remurf, sorry. Um, and I'm sort of freaking out, but I'm not freaking out about Remurf. At this point, I've kind of thrown my hands up in the air and said, 
whatever I fit in the car is going to Remurf, right? Um, what I'm starting to freak out about is Mrs. Dragon leaves Sunday for DC, right? She's leaving Colorado, going to DC, and then she's back here on Thursday. The thing that worries me about that is I have a lot of outside work I have to do that I haven't even started yet. So I, I know I'm going to get yelled at is basically where I'm going. Um, so yeah, hopefully she doesn't ground me and she still lets me go to Remurf. Okay, what's next? Um, let's just keep going down our wire mapping guide. Check things off. So we've got our solid state relay wired up. That once again went to output three here for six eight. Output three. This is our SSR for the bed. So the SSR is fully wired up, except we don't have anything into the power supply just yet. Next up. Would be heated bed Wagos. We've got those. We've got the 24 volt power supply port connection that goes to the neutral wire, which is brought around. And we've got the connection to the SRR. And we've got the, no, we still need to do the bed thermos. That's the other one we need. Bed thermal. There we go. Like which which one of these did I make? So this wire is 6HC, temp 3. Seriously? Okay, take my word for it. This says 6HC, temp 3. This was handwritten by me because it ran out of my pretty wires. And because this is going to go up and around the cable chain, that's where I'm going to start off at is trying to feed this down through the cable chain. And if I can't feed it down through there, I'm just going to have to open it up. Might not be able to with the big connector that Nope, it's going through. Doing good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have the same thing at the top here where we can feed our. the pins that have our barrels on it running around at the top.
once again, our thermistor wires, which are here. Two thermistor wires. We're going to bring those in here. Down. We're going to connect one to each of the two Legos. And we do that because that way it makes life easier when we go to take the bed off if we ever have to. So there's the one side, here's the other. Now this is a red and a black cable. I'm using the same thing that's called out for in the wiring guide. Um, thermistors are just resistors. There's no polarity on them, so no need for polarity but we're going to follow the wire guide as much as possible. Got this going around. This is going into 6HV temp. So we know that this is at some point going to go up underneath and around. So, 6HC temp 3 on our diagram. Temperatures are kind of right here in the middle of our diagram. So you've got your Ethernet connector, you've got the chip over here, and these are our temperature connectors. And they go from 0 down to 3, so it's going to be at the bottom section. And once again, there is a, a ground and a signal cable. In this case, the red's a signal cable. And the signal for the tip three pin is the bottom pin closest to the Ethernet and USB. So in that case, red and then black is up. See what I'm talking about. So back in, got our connector. The red cable um, is going to be a pin closer to the Ethernet and USB C connector. We've got four temp sensors here. Now we can come around and route our cable a little bit nicer. Pop up. That one's tables are down. Keep bed wagos for the power supply and the trigger, excuse me, not the trigger, thermistor, the sex bolt. So the sex bolt is our switch up here. Sex bolt is our initial bed height trigger. We're going to come off of our sex bolt and 
route our line down, so I need to find that wire. Be a fairly long one. Here. FTM full dock. And that went over there. Sex bolt. Okay, so our sex bolt calls for a two pin JST to a five pin um, mole X connector. Um, AK pin. So we're not going to be able to get this connector down through our cable chain. So we are going to have to finally open up our cable chain to get this through. We work on opening that up. I'm trying to keep from having to do it, but last connector bit us. Okay. Thought this is going to be easy, maybe not. No, if I'm going to try to push this uphill. Well, how's everybody doing? Hopefully everybody's doing good. Staying out of trouble. As well as you have everything ready to get to the airport and get on the uh, plane. Not going to. I don't know why it seems like this is.
and the new Y. And yes, I am trying to be that guy that routes cables through a cable chain. When I was trying to open the cable chain, it did not seem like it wanted to play ball with me. Yay, we got it through. Now, on your six volt connector, once again, do a little bit of research, figure out which side should be which. On the six volt, Normally in like Clipper, you'd be able to just adjust the, you know, oh, it's triggering the wrong way, so we could just change it. I don't know how easy or simple that is in RepRap firmware yet. Hopefully it's, it's about as easy. If not, then it might require a, a change of pin out. That's in. Bring this around. I think there may be a, uh, a zip tie that goes here just to hold these wires fully together and up and out of the way. So. And once again, same thing. We're gonna bring this down, route it around. Gonna have to go under. And we're connecting into the 6HC IO5. I hate HC. Our IO connectors is. This collection over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, and this one is using ground signals. I have to move some more slightly to get this in.
and looking at this, this is a lot longer than it needs to be. So we could probably take out a good deal of this wire routing or this uh, overall wire. up here at the top because it'll be easier to replace the JST connector rather than the I've got plenty of JST connectors I'll replace those rather than go through and replace all of the um, like the duet connectors so much easier to do the JSTs Nova Ninja, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Does anyone have room in the check on baggage? I don't know. Nice, Da Vinci. Yeah, I, I need to, I'll say, practice loading the car with everything that needs to go. And then make some hard decisions on what to pull back out. Um, I want to take a Micron, the solid fork, and a Rook 2020 um, to the show. I would love to take the Annex Engineering K3. I'm just not sure if I have a way of, of getting it in the car with everything else that has to go and packing it safely. Right? Uh, it's going to make like a multi-day cross-country road trip with Mrs. Dragon. You need to make sure that it makes it safely. So that's the sex bolt. Hmm. Is there a way... Apparently not. All right, folks, I, I'm just trying to figure out, like, how the heck do I put a comment in here?
There we go. Low volt DC to DC converter. We've got the line run back there for that. Um, going to use that to feed into a set of Wagos, and from the Wagos will come out to um, the, both the 12 volt and the 5 volt DC. A last minute decision we decided to do. So, The only thing I can think of is Chris was thinking about coming all the way up, then going under, and coming all the way back down the other. Sorry about the very arm. The way I see this coming down, coming over, and having the, you know, keeping that length correct. Do that. One that comes down from the top, loops around and goes in for the bed. Go ahead and pump up the 6HD connection. I can touch all R. Um, that stuff's wired in. Wired in. Wants us to do the 12 volt and then the 5 volt. We're talking about running those separately. I'm sorry, not running them separately, but running them off of a common set of Wagos. But I think we're going to have the room. We can probably just run it right with both of those. I can find the other one.
this year to five volt. Go ahead and get this one connected on. I think. Ed's going to 24 volt, not 5 volt. This was mains. Sorry. This is mains. This and the bed all goes to mains, not DC side. No, we should be good. We should be good. I can just fingers and wiring. Uh-oh, Tesla is starting their gambling. Five volt one that's going to come around. Come around to the back side here, and then we'll do our 12 volt and five volt connections. No, I said I was going to go into Tama Wago. It makes more sense to me to use the Wagos, but we will follow the guide. So it means the positive is on the left and the negative is in the center. Once again, all of my labels are on the positive side. My cables. I'm not cutting uh, as much. I'm just trying to fight with wires. Wires and screw terminals. You know, really, really, really am toying around with the idea of putting some standard labels on top of the these DC converters. It's red text on a black background, on a not black background. And it's really hard to see, especially if you get any glare whatsoever. Okay, so the 12 volts connected in, the 5 volts connected in, got everything still routed. 12 volt DC connector, right now it's only talking about connecting in the 12 volt DC, it's not talking about running it to anything just yet. The 5 volt, we've got our 5 volt in and then the 5 volt out. 
that our five volt out was going to be used to supply five volt to the um, CH6. So our CH6 right here is um, you've got your main power connectors in and you've got um, right behind this 15 amp fuse and right next to this capacitor there's a 5 volt in. And that's where this is going to go. So this is going to bring 5 volt in from an external source and we'll use this to provide a 5 volt rail rather than down converting um, 12, or 24 volt to 5 volt or excuse me, 24 volt to 12 volt to 5 volt. Uh, require me to come around here to do this install. And the negatives are the inner terminals and the positives are the outer terminals. This lined up and picked it up. Okay. Everything in there paint so far. The <laughs> 5 volt DC converter is fully wired up. And let's see. The Do It 3 6 HC, we've already got that. The Do It 3 3 HC, which is connected in series with or uh, in parallel with our 6 HC. That's the The water pump wiring is next. We're going to install that. Um Yeah, we're going to connect it, but it's just going to be dangling 
kind of over in this vicinity because this is where our um, on the panel here is where the water pump and stuff is going to go. So it's going to be just and this is what's coming from our uh, Yeah, so this has two different pins going into one common pin. So this is there we have one connection. Went ahead and defined the water pump and the fan. Because the fan has a connection, they will come over to the board, and then the water pump itself is fade terminals that come over to the 12 volt input. So, we're going to have Doing this there, moving around. Going to come down and go into the SHC output nine. Output nine, according to our guide. So output nine is the bottom one here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and six, which are four wire, seven, eight, nine. So I'll have to double check these jumpers because these jumpers are setting whether it's 12 volt, 5 volt, fused inlet, what have you. We'll need to make sure that those are properly jumpered. With this a little bit. Uh, 
going around and going our 12 volt. We do recycling and dishes. Okay. That makes me feel like nectar is going to come out more. This one, these. I'm not sure how much slack I need to leave for this connector. That's why I'm trying to leave as much as possible based on the power.
this just seems sorry i'm trying to figure out the table routing and stuff and it seems like the volt power wires are longer than the are way longer than the um the ones for the fan signal itself or maybe just a wire link mismatch there it could be causing or it may cause an issue down the road something for me to be aware of sorry um so what's what's the next in line? Next in line is wiring for the water pump. Hasn't been installed yet, but cable is now routed. There's the display for the panel due. We'll hold off on that. I've got it built and created, but we haven't done the mount for the panel due yet, and that's part of the closure section. We'll add that when we hit it. Tool dock. So, one thing to notice on the tool dock is the way the wiring goes at the at both ends of the tool dock, you've got tool zero, um, heater, and thermistor. But if you notice the pin out on the, uh, let me go full screen. Sorry. So this is something to be of, uh, aware of. You've got connection that goes from your Duet 3, right? And it's going to be on IO0. Sorry, that's the panel due. My bad. Um, the tool dock itself. We're going from the Duet 3 6HC. And we've got a 2-pin Molex uh, LG and then a 2-pin Molex KK. So the Molex LG is the smaller ones, the KK is the larger one. Um, or no, the other way around. Um, because you'll have a thermistor and a heater output. Now notice these are two two pin headers, right? On your four pin micro fit, pay special attention. It goes one of four, so the negative, positive, negative, and then the other positive. So know that your on your FDM cables or your FDM tool board cables, so the ones that go from the board to your dock, okay? So from the board to the dock. Your cables, it might be hard to see, but this is the FDM dock, okay? The outer two cables here are um, 20 gauge. The inner two cables are the thermistor cable, and they are um, 24 gauge. And they come out to two separate connectors at the panel, or at the panel, at the, uh, the board. If I can get them to separate. They come out to two different connections. Your 
output, so your higher power one is in the larger connector, and your thermistor, which is your 24 gauge, goes into the standard connector. And you're going to have separate pinouts for each one of these, right? The pinout at the tool dock's the same, but your your terminations for each one is different at the far end. So this one, the labeling says temp one and out two. So temp one and out two, this would technically be our second dock in the row, which is dock one. So we've got dock zero, dock one, dock two, three, dock four. And that's critical because each one has a different length for the cables. So what I should have done was actually added FDM dock and put the dock number. So I'm going to hand write that in and add a one. So this is dock or tool number one. Because remember, our, our tools start at zero. So this gets connected at the back. And I'm going to assume into the farther one. So on the back of the tool head boards, there are these four pin Molex connectors and they are literally just um, like straight through, right? So we'll do that. We do have um, cable ties. We'll be able to cable tie these up. We'll come all the way through and then down through our cable chain which means I need to feed these through the cable chain. Really need to figure out. These open. So I was only able to get a couple of these built because I ran out of 20 gauge cable. So, um, like I said, I've got some more on order coming from KB3D. It's in the mail, so it'll be here like Monday or Tuesday. And my plan is, even though I've got four tools installed, because of how much of a pain it'll be to get these connectors, is once again, this panel is going to have all the water cooling. So this panel doesn't come off that easy. It means getting access to these connectors is going to be fun. So I'm going to do all of my wiring and have it all ready ahead of time. Oops, pop that one off. Hopefully, I didn't break it. There we go. Through there. Oh, 
and I know I'm trying, you know, I've been saying how, how much of a pain in the butt this is going to be to do this particular wiring right here. Um, give me a second and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We'll go to the smaller. Okay, shenanigans. Take care. Thank you for the for hanging out a little bit. Browser window. There we go. Okay, so you see potentially where these are connecting. So there's a connection right here, connection here, right? These are the two connections for each one of these docks. This one's gonna come out, come up, and then go up and into the tool. But this whole side here is gonna have a panel on it with your water cooler. So if you don't run all of these ahead of time and you're trying to reach back in here, you're coming from the other side trying to reach in blind to get these connections in. Um, probably not going to be fun or easy to do. So that's why I'm saying routing all of these before putting the side panel on, whether you've got all five tools or not, probably in your best interest um, to make your life easier. Now that we've got this wire routed, once again, we're gonna make sure that it's coming down through from underneath. And this is where we're starting to get all kinds of busy in our cable trough. Pass this one under. Okay, so we've got 6HC temp 1. Once again, these were our temperatures. And temp 1, so we go 0, 1 to 3. So temp 1 would be the second connector. And then this goes to output two. So this is once again one of our um, high outputs. So this is going to be the output in the center. That in the right facing direction. Okay. Now we just need to. Uh, Try and make sure we understand our cable routing.
little room in the way there. I'm just trying to get my wires pretty and rounded. All of these wires, it's going to be fairly critical to make sure that we've got stuff routed decently. I wait until I get the rest of my FDM tools, or at least just the ones that I've got in here. Got cables built for them. That was one FDM tool. Uh, two. Okay. Think. Something that I did not put a end on. That sucks. Get that one out. Lighting. There we go. Cool. This one is going to 6HC out one. It's probably going to be our tool dock to zero. One to zero, so tool dock zero. This will be the first tool that we use. Um, all the way to the right, full dock, zero.
taking the time to do your wire management should hopefully pay dividends later on with a machine that's operating nice, that looking nice, doesn't have things that are rubbing or getting in the way of each other. Last thing we want to do is get things done, button it up. All right, let's do the first movement check and then find out we've got a, um, you know, something that's catching or snagging somewhere along the way. It would just be bad. And since I believe I only had two of these done, I'm going to go ahead and close this up for the team. Right in our tools afterwards. Hmm. It was me realizing that both of those wires that I just ran actually fed through the two wires of the um which one called the uh, water pump. So I'm going to wind these back out. Fix that. And some of you may be wondering why these are not sleeved. Um, well, they're not sleeved because I just, I do have some sleeving that I can use, but in the process of said sleeving, um, I'm going to run into my own set of problems there as well. So I have made the conscious decision not to leave at the moment on these really because sleeving through the cable chains is going to over constrain them and then sleeving um sleeving in the troughs um has its own issue meaning um if i sleeve in the trough i'm going to run into um, some issues with the thickness of the overall bundle.
now, and I do not know how much of this gets solved and made easier with the linear wiring harness. It could very well be that the bulk of this is all in one big shroud. It just lays in the trough, and then you bring a couple of things out, you're done. Or it could be that you know, you're know you doing a lot of the fighting that I'm dealing with based on the number of FDM tool heads that you order from the get-go, and therefore how much wiring you get from the start. All this completely back. Who sent her? No.
two. Okay. A lot of off things we do with it. Okay, I don't think I had any other tool docs done as far as the FDM tool docs. So I will have to continue to work on these um, as I get more wire and get to build these. And I, I apologize. I'm just sitting here to play with the wire to keep everything. as I keep playing around. So I don't have any more of the board to the tool docks. So, but you will notice that the first two that I did went to the 6HC. The next three tool docks go to the 3HC, so board in the back. That's something to be cognizant of is which board things are going to. And in a lot of ways, we're gonna wind up with like some of the excess tools go to the, the board back here. Um, 
You have the wiring for the exposure lighting. FDM tools is from this rear board that we were just working on. Up through this connector, through the umbilical, and into the tools themselves. And then the tool head is everything that routes up and through the cable chain at the top. We have a few of those things done. Um, I don't have the E motor, the extruder motor. I don't have that wire cable yet. I don't have the tool lock motor cable done up yet. The X end stop, I don't think I have done. The Z end stop. See the X and the Z? Full lock stop. Z stop. Y stop. E motor. It'll do the motor. I yell the motor. Heart fan. So I've got a few things that can go up to the tool head, just not everything yet. I was really trying to figure out what I could run with the cable that I had. Um, and I will show these off. So these are the tool head cables that I assembled. I used a two to one shrink fabric with some heat shrink at the end. This one, I cut the fabric a little short, didn't realize that it, I knew it was gonna shrink this way, I didn't realize it was gonna shrink this way. So, problem solved that time. This is the cable that came from Lineo. Um, this was one of the beta cables and it was pinned out side by side. So I did have to pop a couple of these pins out, actually all of them and repin them in the right order so that it would match the tool docks. So I will get these installed this evening. Um, just not run to the tools, but I will run them through the tool dock so that they're at least there. Um, there's gonna be a pain in my tuchus. This one's going to be a pain. Here we go over here. We really need to understand the actual tool routing. I think everything from the tool is going to wrap around through this hole, down along the back, and down this cable chain, and then in and around. Um, which I think is going to just be one, it makes these wires really, really long. And then two, um, I, I kind of, there's a part of me that says if we get some 40 40 uh, uh, wire cover or uh, extrusion cover that I don't see why we wouldn't be able to route these, some of these like down through the trough and under, make them easier to get to the board and drop off this big cut around. That's me thinking and pontificating out loud.
and this would probably be a little bit easier if I had these um, like in cable shrouds or something like that, but I was afraid of just simply um, having too many things shrouded in the actual cable chains and basically running out of room for the cables themselves in the cable chain. So, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of free and loose wires. So what I'm gonna need to do, turn this around, we're gonna start routing things up and through the cable chain here. This over there, like I said, printer, and turn it 90 degrees. Hopefully without knocking a bunch of things off. This is where we need to go through and open up our cable chain. Like you. Some of these we won't be able to open because it's where we've got our uh, tie downs for our water cooling. And also some of these we won't be prepared to actually terminate today because we need to either figure out the final wire length and then, you know, like our part cooling fan here, we need to change the Connector type, figure out what our length is and make that correct. Um, our Z end stop actually doesn't have wires connected to it. It's just um, mounted right now. So we'll need to get that fixed. And for the most part, I tried to keep the, uh, like I said, the color scheme that was being mentioned, I tried to keep it. Um, but there were some things like it was calling for, oh, your signal pin for your end stop's going to be green. Well, I did green for the first end stop, and then I did yellow for another one and blue for another one. And that'll just help me later on identify you know, wires in the wiring loom itself. We've got all of these open, which will make things a little bit easier to route through and around our ones that we can't open yet, or we can't open because we've got um, zip ties. This was the TL stop. This is the tool lock stop. So that is our um so this is our tool lock stop here. This would be a three wire JST. We'd be able to stick that in there and then kind of figure out what our wire would look like. I don't know where or how we're gonna zip tie these in. Um, don't know. Yeah, 
I don't know how the actual cable routing is up here, so I'm going to leave a little bit. We'll figure out how to zip tie this stuff together and do some strain relief. At the top end here, I'll ask Chris if he can send me a picture so I can see. Um, but for now, I'll do something like this. That'll give us the ability. Our water cooling block is going to go right here in this vicinity with the water cooling lines coming. So we're going to have to go up and over or down and under. Now I'm going to kind of go up and over. And once again, we've got plenty of length here, which means we are supposed to go along the tool dock, down our vertical chain, under and then around in our cable trough to get to this connection. So let's, I think I'm gonna run the other connections through here and then we'll figure out how to route this down and around all at once. These are all pretty much the same length which is 256 um, centimeters. Which means this could very well be, you know, all of these could very well go into a single cable sheath up here, um, or at least once we get out of the cable chain and go down. But once again, that just becomes, oh man, that's the first. That's this the very first one I had to go around. Go through. Hey Westry, how's it going? We are doing cabling and it's, it's been a joy so far. I've been making my own cables because we're having some production delays getting the wire harness from Lineo. And so I've made my own cables and now we're just working on doing some routing. And this is proving to be joy because some of these cables like the ones I'm working with right now are basically two and a half meters long so six or seven feet long oops I keep dropping them How's your day going, Westry? Getting tire fixed and farm work. Well, that's fun. What'd you do to your tire? Is it on the truck or on a farm implement? Okay, now this one is for the Z end stop. And you'll see that we've got a microfit connector. Our Z end stop is mounted over here. We haven't done any um oh any uh termination yet. So this is basically just going to wrap it around the the tool stop for now so that the weight doesn't pull it back through. And we'll have to terminate that side down the road. All right. Next up will be the part fan. Which will wind up being another one of those things that uh, 
will have to terminate down the road or re-terminate, I should say, because it called for a MicroFit 3 connector and that part fan, as most of our fans do, comes with a JST connector. So we're just gonna have to um, pop that off and change the connector to a different type. And that part fan is mounted horizontally underneath the bottom. So there's that. So we'll wind up doing something along the lines of that. And once again, this is just going to get wrapped around the tool lock, um, just like we did the other one, to keep the weight from pulling it back through and out. You can see now we're getting a nice long uh, thing of cables here. And we haven't run any of the motors yet because I need, I ordered some more motor cables. The Y end stop, that is actually back here. So once again, three pin connector, we'll plug that in. And this, I am assuming, is going to come down one of these channels. Come underneath our 2060 and be going to go into our cable trough. And this goes to 6HCIO2. So 6HCIO2. Where is that? IO2 is down here at um that bottom one. The last one on the bottom row, closest to our cable trough, which is nice. That plugged in. Right into the cable trough. Round. Cable trough. And as you see, we'll have plenty of cable that we can hopefully just put in here. And I am looking for some 4040 watt cover, kind of like we were using before on the Trident. And if I get some of that, I'll be able to just put that right in that slot. That covers it up, boom, done. Now I'll keep everything nice and neat and out of the way. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do? We've got the X in stop. We do? No, we've got. The Z, the tooling, and the part fan. So, Z end stop, tool head end stop, part tooling fan. We haven't run those around and terminated them just yet. I don't think I want to route those and terminate them until I get all of these cables installed because it's going to be easier to route them as a batch through the couple of, of troughs here. The Y in stop, just ran that. The B motor, I believe I have the B motor done up. I have a B motor. So the B motor. Should be based on the cable length, this one right here. Now, here's the thing that I just noticed too. Or not just noticed, I noticed this earlier today. You remember back when we were doing the build, we decided originally we had our, our outlets over here. And we decided based on looking at the instructions that no, they had to be on the inside. Well, I'm here to tell you, this bed will rip that out. 
So I'm going to have to untension our belts, take these stacks down again, take the motor off, rotate the motor back 90 degrees so it's coming out the back side here, and then put everything back. And I have to do that on both sides and then retension our belts. Because coming out this side, even with having the bed mounted here, I, I mounted a tool on our tool dock. It's going to have to come up to where the um, bed, I mean, just, just look, these tool docks are where they're getting picked up at. So the bed's going to have to come up here, which means the side rail is going to be up here and it's going to hit this connector. So I do have to untension the XY belts, drop these down so that I can take the motors off, flip these 90 degrees, and then reinstall them. And I need to do that on both sides. That will probably be something that we'll do here because I'm starting to run out of cables that I've made to install. The Z motor, right? Z motor cable. Well, our Z motor is right here. So that's going to be a simple, small cable connector, right? Doesn't need to go far. So the Z motor. Um, goes to driver two on the 6HC. So driver two on the 6HC. The driver two is the one closest to the mounting point. So it's well, here. And they do have the colors on there, which is nice. A second here. This sunny. It's not talking about winds today, but I tell you what, I'm hearing a lot of wind. <laughs> okay, this. Got this. We just did the B motor. The B motor we cannot do until I swap the motors around. Or, yeah, swap the motors around. I have to twist the motors around. Um, wires. Um, so we're going to have to deal with this. Let me, well, let's just go ahead and get into it. I'm going to need my ball head drivers, if I remember right. Three millimeter to loosen up our, no, those are button heads. I don't need to take it completely off, but by and that was the other issue that we were going to have in trying to do this is the, the the belts are going around the pulleys. Hopefully, we can do this. without having to 
mysteriously dismount a whole bunch of stuff. Hey, Marcus, how's it going? Welcome in. Ender 3. Okay, if you're having that issue, if I remember right, that is normally a corrupted file on the card. And that's either it corrupted when you were writing the file to the card, or the SD card itself is corrupted. So either you ejected it too soon, or something like that, or just the SD card itself is going bad. New printer, you got it in December, okay. Um, SD cards can go bad. SD cards can be damaged if they're removed too early while it's still writing. Um, and just, let's be honest, some of the SD cards that are sent with these printers are not the greatest to begin with. Drink a little bit of my protein shake. Um, here, this motor, oh, thank four millimeter screws, three millimeter driver. Do this one. We'll get to this one. Down. We need to get to these three. But honestly, that's just enough. And I know there are some people cringing right now seeing me take this off with the belt still on. I'm trying to be as careful as possible to get this off without having to undo anything more than I really absolutely have to because it just comes becomes more of a pain in the butt, more stuff I have to take off. I mean, I am going to have to sit down and make sure that everything's lined up and retention the belts and stuff like that. So I am still going to have to do that stuff. But now I can get to the three M3 screws on the top, turn this around. has been rotated. Now, I need to rotate the bottom well.
these screws go all the way through the um the motor I really wish I had a way of showing you this, what I'm doing. With it. Best thing I can do is rotate the printer around, but since I'm trying to do this and keep the belts on and keep the belts from getting misaligned, it's problematic to say the least. With the current camera angles that I am afforded. Don't do like I did and rotate this the wrong way. That was. Yeah, Marcus. Um, quite honestly, I would get a new one. And also, um, just be aware, because you may want to go out and be like, oh, let me get the, the biggest card I, I can get. Don't get anything over 32 gig. Because some of those Creality boards have issues with either 16. Actually, 16 gig would be fine if you're, because you're running still the standard Marlin, correct? The, or whatever came with the board itself. Like you haven't changed the OS, the clipper or anything. Um, yeah, then I would suggest sticking with probably a 16 gig um, SD card. Anything more than that, it you may just have read issues with it.
And the other reason I went to my ball end driver here is because it's got a rubber handle. I can get to these with my Fabrico driver set. The problem is, is they got a metal, uh, a neural, knurled metal side to them that I know will scratch the surface. Gotcha. Yeah, the um sorry, those little SD card readers that they give you as well. Yeah, half the time those things are lackluster at best as well. So yeah, it it sucks either way. Um but that would be the first thing that I would say is if, if it's not reading the card <coughs> or you're getting that 100% print, but it hasn't done anything, that's typically a sign that your SD card, either, either the file on the SD card is corrupted or the SD card itself has gotten corrupted. Um, and like I said, with the, with the Creality cards that they send, they're not the most robust cards. Some people have no problems with them whatsoever. Other people have nothing but endless problems with them. And at the end of the day, it's probably just easier to move on. All right, that one's undone. That one is undone. Now, once again, I need to do the undo the three belts at the top, trying to keep my three screws at the top, trying to keep my belt as aligned as possible. And as a unit, just rotate this slightly and screw everything back in. Now we need to do the same thing for the bottom. Yeah, you should be fine with Marlin. Your your G code slicer should be set right by default, especially if you're using the recommended one by the vendor. Um, it's just more a matter of dealing with the SD card itself. That's normally where those errors come from is the SD card itself.
what's good the the more correct way to do this is to undo all the belts so you can pull the belts out get everything uh flipped around reconnect the belt retention everything i am going through and just trying to do this without having to dismantle a good chunk of things and I'll just have to pay attention and double check and make sure that my belts are properly seated. Before I start doing any retensioning or anything like that, I'm gonna make sure that our belts are properly um, aligned before we start putting any tension on. You know, it's definitely not the time of, oh, I saved a step and then, oh, I'm redoing all of my belts. And let me go order a new belt because I jacked something up. Why not? Right. Got both of them actually in and starting now. Now the nice thing with the belt arrangement here is you can actually see your belt. So you can easily tell whether or not you're in and around that that pulley in the appropriate height and manner. So you're not going to be Grading it against the top of the pulley or the bottom of the pulley. Also, your printer can connect to your laptop via USB-C. Will that work out better? Um, you can directly connect and, and run your files. The problem is, is it's running then off of your laptop. 
which means your laptop has to stay connected and plugged in because your laptop is directly sending the G-code. So the downside of that is you need to keep your laptop connected to the printer while it's printing. And you also need to be careful that you don't start running anything on your laptop that would impede the, um, the print. Meaning like, oh, I'm, I'm running on a Microsoft laptop and in the middle of a 12 hour print, it decides to do Microsoft update and reboot. Right? That would be bad. That, that's going to kill your print job. Why the majority of us will run, uh, you know, like a Raspberry Pi or a Raspberry Pi alternative. You can find cheaper Raspberry Pi alternatives with like uh, Octoprint for your Marlin. And that way your Octoprint, which is running on five volts and sipping energy, is your actual um, print toast. And it doesn't impact your laptop and anything else you're doing on your laptop. In that case, you, would, uh, you wouldn't be moving SD cards anymore unless you really wanted to. You could slice things on your laptop and send it over wireless or wired to your Raspberry Pi and then um, you know, run it right from Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi. And that's how most everybody will do things is either uh, Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi or, you know, Clipper on a uh, Raspberry Pi. This makes life easier. Here's those three. Now that we did our our move, we can go ahead and do our B motor, which is going to be this one that's facing me. And that B motor, a 61 centimeter cable. Will come down and it's going into driver zero. Driver zero. Same one as this one, furthest one back. Bring this down and around underneath. And it's going to go on this furthest driver back. And what we'll wind up doing is we'll just load this right in, bring it down as far as we can with some, once again, I'm, I'm going to order some 4040, um, not sleeving, uh, extrusion uh, sleeves or covers or whatever. And that'll keep that wire out of the way and make it nice and neat. Because this, once again, is the front view of the printer. So I don't want to have a bunch of cables showing up on the sides and everything. We'll try and make that nice and neat. Um, and I believe that is all of the wires that I have pre-made prior to the stream. Let me... I will just go to the full display. So what I've been doing here is just going through and highlighting everything that's been installed. That way I have an idea of, okay, this has been installed. This is still needing to be done. Um, so we installed the power inlet. We haven't connected it yet, but it's in the printer. It's ready to be connected. Um, I just... I think I really want to do Wagos on that, but we'll we'll figure that out here in a little bit. Solid state relay, that's been all wired up. The heat bed Wagos, 
Um, all of that's been wired up to the heated bed Wago mounts and then back down to the um, board. The sex bolt switch, which once again is just like way, way longer than it needs to be. So we've got a we've got a comment note in here to talk to Chris about that and say, hey, we can probably cut uh you know, I don't know, 60, 70 centimeters. Not 60 or 70. You know, a handful of centimeters out of this wiring. And once again, I'll use some 2020 um to cover this up. Yeah, I can just I'm not going to cut this and re-terminate it. I'll just use some 2020 plot cover to uh, cover this up some. Make it less noticeable. Um, the 12 volt DC converter is plugged in. The 5 volt DC converter is plugged in and the extension cable running into our board. The power for the both duet boards has been run. The water pump wiring has been run. Um, and it's just some weirdness there. Cable length's different and stuff. I may have to change that around some. Yeah, that cable length. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um... The display, I've got the cable done, but it's no sense in installing it just yet because, well, I haven't installed the dis the panel due yet. So I'll hold off on that. The pool dock, we've got the pool dock zero and one cable run. I need to build the other three tool dock cables and we'll install those um, once I get to the cabling in. So that'll be the next stream. Um, Enclosure lighting, that's the thing that we can still do. So our enclosure lighting. Um, back here. So our enclosure lighting, once again, we've got a nice long cable and then a couple of short cables. So our lighting is right here. We're going to, how best do I want to run? Get this connector through this, then I will do that. Will you go through? What do you want? So I'm just trying to figure out a way, but I don't want it to be motion. This may come back to haunt me if I run. So. Gonna be a cable for the uh may bring this just up and over. Or we'll just say the heck with it, route it this way, we'll join it in with our wires. They come in on this side. See, you guys are going to let me make that mistake. We come in on this side. A 24 volt and ground. Is that right? Before I do that, let me, let me think through this. Let me think through this, which means I need to look at my lights because... 
There, there's nothing that says in and out on these lights. There's no directional arrow. Um, so I don't know if it truly 100% matters. This is just ground and power. In which way that, the, you know, as long as they're all going the same way, I don't think it would matter which way it comes in. But the way that I pinned it out would come in over on this side. And way too hard to read. Now R1 to R10, R1 to R whatever, R1 to R whatever. So, my assumption would have been that the power is flowing this way. Put this one here. But once again, we're expecting these to come around and down through the cable chain. Way I pinned it out, it would have come in here. Does anybody know? Is there directionality on two wire LEDs on just 24 volt and ground? Or is the directionality requirement the data pin? Anybody? I mean, based on the fact that this is a um, based on the fact that the length of this particular cable, it would make sense that it plugs into this side, comes down, and goes in. Um, because of, like I said, the overall length. This is a shorter cable. And the other ones, and if these are coming all the way through the top, rotting over, down, and in, then it's we got to deal with you know cable lengths here. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Now these are straight white. You know, this is going to stink because I think what I'm going to wind up having to do is rotate all of these 180 degrees. Because like this is R1 and the resistor one. When I say R1, this is resistor number one. This is the higher number resistor. So I'm assuming the current's flowing this way. And I was assuming that my wire would come out here, but my wire coming out here with the length of cable doesn't make sense. It makes sense that it gets wired starting over here and coming around. 
which means if that's correct and the R1s are over here, they all need to get flipped 180 degrees. I mean, not hard, it just... There's something that would have to be done. Yeah, the devil is in the details, exactly. And I'll tell you the... Um, the black stop did not have any markings on it, but at least I could go to a page and figure it out. This thing I'm looking at and it's like there's no um, there's no directional arrow, there's no nothing. If you look, like right now I'm reading The Daylight on a Stick XXL by Blam. Um, but just looking at the other side is where it's got the, um, the resistor count. God. Now. Course. Flipping it over, my pinouts are wrong. Gotta swap my pinout. Because why not? But like you said, the devil's in the details, so swapping a pin is still rather easy. Say that. And I can't pin out. And this has been a kind of a time consuming venture. The last thing we want to do is uh, blow the light and potentially take out something else on the board. So, 
definitely worth our time to make sure that we're doing it right. Oh yeah, and I've definitely been double and triple checking as I've been building these wires. And as I, you know, as I was saying, I, I happened to notice that one of the wires that I got from uh, uh, Chris KB3D actually had the wires incorrectly uh, installed. And that's not necessarily a, a bad thing. It was beta wiring. And, you know, common sense would have said, that's going to be a loss. Uh, common sense would say, oh, I've got thermistor and heater wires. They're pairs. Thermistor wires go together. Heater wires go together. And side by side, we're good. Kind of sort of do that with all of our can wiring, right? But for whatever reason, here we've got the thermistor wires in the middle and the heater wires on the outside. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Still doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But that's the way it is, that's the way it's on the board. And I confirmed with Chris that that is how they're all going to be done in the future. But that was just beta hardware. So it was using the J Ready tool and popping the pens and reinstalling the pens. I probably would have been a little bit quicker if I had just swapped out the screw and grabbed a different one, but. So what I'm going to have to do is once I get these swapped around, figure out if I have to repin all of my little jumper cables now. I think I'm going to have to because the connectors will be reversed. I kind of wonder if this would be a good thing to add a note on for the lower. I've also going to say polarity, but it's more of the directionality of your um, light sticks. It's like I said, there's no, there's zero markings on these light sticks as far as you know direction or energy flow. But like you said, if you get the energy flow backwards, you're going to know about it. And you're going to burn up a light stick. If you're lucky, that's all you burn up is a light stick. If you're not lucky, you could take out a board or something that's not protected on the board. And on a printer that's this scale and this cost, you know, burning up a burning up a big tech board that's fifty, sixty dollars, 
is one thing. Burning up a duet board that is two hundred plus dollars is a different matter. Yeah, poop those magic smoke is definitely always bad. So we got the got the big oh, here's my two small jumpers. These are like 16 centimeters. They're made just to be able to jump right around the corner. And oh, these should be good. This is just putting both sides in parallel or all the all the strings in parallel. And these could probably be made smaller, but you get that we don't we don't know like how far some might positioning them. You need to leave a little bit of wiggle room. You don't want to make them too tight that you can't install the darn things. Don't want to make it too tight because once you install these, you're going to have to like do like I do and take the light bar off to try and undo them because they're so tight. Okay, there are those are then needs to go down through the cable chain so we can open our cable chain up again and route that back down through with the rest of the wires that we put in there. Now, this particular cable chain, there is no movement in this cable chain. This is just a, we'll call it a, a, we're making it a cable raceway for lack of a better term. So, this very well could be all silicone wire or, you know, less expensive wire than FEP. It will be enclosed, so it needs to be able to handle temperature but it's not moving. This particular cable chain is stationary. Uh, what do we call them? Uh, ladders. And because this one is not, um, I don't know why. I do. Because I'm going to wait until I get the other the motor wires in, which will come in in a couple of weeks, actually. So apparently, I mean, I can make, I think I've got, or can get quickly some, you know, standard motor wire, six to four pin. The issue is, is that it's the length, right? What we need is, in some cases, 256 centimeters. 
Well, that's two and a half meters. Um, have you guys seen three meter um, motor wire cables anywhere? Because I, I do not, I do not. Um, I finally found one and well, I found it on AliExpress and eBay, but they're, you know, in, in both cases they're coming from China. So a couple of weeks shipping to get anything. But, you know, that, that's the only place I was able to find him. This is the issue I'm going to have. Trying to get things down through this. I may just cut this shorter or possibly unloose, loosen this up and slide it down some. Why is that lid not going in? This is not the right lid. I mean, that's having the right lid is normally a precursor to getting things. Under here, this one's going under. And yes, I know I'm going to have to take these covers off later on. Right now, I'm just doing it to keep things pretty. And you can see this is, I'll show you that in a second. It's just one of these cables is too long. And I may just cut it down and shorten it to make it match easier to work with. This one goes to 60 out 8. Going to E, which is here.
Look, that's tidied up. That's tidied up. This is good. These two can get closed up. Now we'll have some other things come over when we get more wiring done. There we go. So we do have a bundle of wires here that are coming down. This is, once again, going to traverse across, go down, then under, and do however to come back. But this wad of cables is going to be run later on. I want to get the motor cables going first so that I can loop all of this together. When I route it down through the cable trough, I think it'll make it easier. At least I'm hoping it makes it easier to get this stuff down through the cable trough and all that if I'm doing it in one batch rather than multiple times. So that's there. Um, this is the panel do um, connector for our display. What else do we have? I think that's it for now. I don't want to do the bed just yet. We'll do the bed kind of last. Um, I will kind of, I'm going to route this somewhat to try and make it look a little bit nicer. Let me bring it up under, over. Uh, I'll work on this. Just printing this up. I will work on now, but why not? And with that, folks, I think we're going to be coming to the end of our stream soon. So, if you guys could do me a favor and take a look at who is on and see who you might want to raid into. Yes, definitely lots and lots of wiring on this. Um, lots of wiring. What I'm thinking is we can bring this up, do a little bit of cable trough or cable thing here. Cover that up, bring it down and around. Cover it up with cable sleeving stuff. Where do I have that at? Hey, here's a small link. This might just be good enough. Oh, well, yeah, that definitely more than we need. You can just loop this up and under, plug it in. Slide this back, tighten it down.
Another nice little cable management job taken care of. Done and out of the way. Oh. Good, Marcus. Yeah, I tend to buy um, 16 and 32 gig SD cards and use those a lot. The um, now just remember when you're doing um, when you're doing things like. Cable management, you really need to cable manage things. Oh, wait, you just ran all these cables here. Means this is going to get put up in there nicely. Want it put up in there nicely. Berg. Um, sorry, got distracted there. Um, you're so on your reality, right? You're running your you're running your firmware and you're using your SD card to load and run files. So in that case, since it's holding all the files that you're printing with, then you need to keep that um kind of big. And you need to keep it in the printer as long as you're printing from your SD card. Now, if you are going with Octoprint or Clipper or something like that, you don't need to have that in your in your SD card slot on your printer to actually print. It only needs to be there to install firmware as long as you're not printing from that that CD or that uh, SD card. So. You have firmware on there, you could take that SD card and use it to run Octoprint, which would then hold all of your print files. So case in point, as we're doing our flipper and stuff like that, I have a 128 meg card that I use to install the firmware on all of my boards. And then it comes out and goes back on the shelf until I need to uh, install firmware on another board. It does not constantly live in the printer because it doesn't need to. Once firmware is installed, everything else is running off the host computer, in this case, I or equivalent. Um, now I did notice that this board, the 6HC, already comes with a 16 gig SanDisk card. I need to get with Chris and find out like, hey, is this is this already installed with stuff or do I just need to blow it away and override it? Um, well, zombie, we've made some good progress. Um, uh, we've got the lights uh ran and installed. We've got most of our other wiring installed. Um, everything that we have left. Let me think. The B motor is installed. The Y end stops installed. I need the A motor and everything up on the tool heads. So the X gantry still has a bunch of wiring that needs to be done. Um, and that's just a simple, you know, it's a matter of needing to get uh, more cable to finish creating the cables that I need and then wrapping that up. The, I've got two of the tool heads, the cabling from the tool head board to the um, controller wired up. I need to build the other three cables and then install and wire those up. And then I need to, I've got three of the actual tool uh, cables. So I just need to build the other two. In fact, we can 
install those if I figure out what I did with them. So two of these I built, and then one was from KB3D that, that I had to repen because it was pinned wrong. Okay. But what these will do is they have a four uh, uh, microfit three four pin connector. And it goes down through this slot back here and will mount into the actual FDM tool board. So get that installed. We'll do that for the other two. And then the other ends got two different um two different connectors and those are for you know the heater and thermistor. In essence, look at these as like uh, small or short uh, CAN bus cables, right? You just have the heater wires and the thermistor wires. Fidgety, fidgety, fidgety. Where you go? It's like this is the one that becomes a pain in the butt because it's right behind the the bed. I might actually have to take this dock off to install this darn cable. Yeah, just this particular cable, you know, the, the spot for it is right behind the bed pulley. So it'll be almost easier to install this particular one with the tool dock off. Got that one plugged in. So we've got three of our tool head cables plugged in. We've got a few cables run for the tool head that I was able to run with the wire that I had on hand. Um, so zombie, I was making my own wire harness because uh, we we're still waiting on cables from Lineo to show up and. I was at a stopping point where I could not go any further without having cables. Um, like I, I didn't want to install, you know, there's a panel that goes here. That panel has to be installed on the left side before you can do any of the water cooling because all the water cooling sits on this side of the printer. Well, the problem is, is if as soon as I put this panel on, I can't easily get to any of these connectors and you just saw how hard it was even with the panel off. So I need to build these and get all of these wires connected and run 
whether or not I'm populating the tool head because once I put that panel on and put the water cooling system in, then if at any point in time I decide to say, oh, well, I need to work on this tool head, I need to drain the water system, I need to remove the water system, I need to remove the panel, or try and disassemble half of this to be able to get to it. it it's kind of a pain in the tuchus, right? So, yeah, just trying to do as much work as I can on this. The only thing I haven't built uh, or I haven't added, um, this is the cable for the panel do. Um, so we'll be able to work on that. I mean, I can connect it to the board. I just, I'm not going to mount the panel do just yet. That, that gets done during the enclosure build. Hey, Poon Dog, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Um, but yeah, the, the lights are installed, the or the, the cabling for the lighting, and I have my, my lights were 180 degrees off. In other words, I had them, so I would have come in on this side, come down, around, and go this way. But the cable that I created said it had to be installed with the, power starting at this corner. So I had to take and flip all these 180 degrees, repen this initial cable, and then the power flow goes this way. So no biggie, it was just something we had to do. Um, I did have to rotate both of my front motors. Once again, it looks like from the instructions that your motor connectors need to be facing towards the inside of the printer. However, I was quickly looking and saying, in order for it to pick up a tool and then start printing, because this gantry ain't moving up and down, the bed's moving up, the, the, um, the plugs, if they're coming out to the inside towards the middle of the printer, um, would foul on the bed uh, frame. So we had to take these off, rotate them around, which meant, you know, loosening them up, undoing the M4 bolts, dropping them down, removing the M3 bolts, swiveling the top, removing the M3 bolts, swiveling the bottom, and then remounting, getting them both done, making sure the belts are still in alignment, and then go through and tension things back up. So we're back in, we're back in business there. Um, yeah. And we've been using a wire map or wire harness map. And I have found a couple of notes in here to talk to Chris about either, you know, hey, these wire lengths are just way too long or um, they're too long, they're too short, or suggestion like rather than running dedicated power all the way back to each one of the buck converters why don't we run just one power line back to a Wago connector that's underneath the 2060 and then power both of them on a single full run so it's just less wires that we're running less wires that we're having to create and less wires that are going to be in these cable troughs overall yeah but so far, everything's been coming out good. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting more wiring so we can finish the wiring. Um, I still haven't installed my my power in cables yet. I want to wait and do those last. And with that, I also need to um, terminate the wires for the heated bed, which I also haven't terminated in because. Once again, I'm trying to decide, do I want to run those to Wagos or do I want to double stack some uh, power cables? I prefer not to double stack mains power cables. I would prefer that on those at least, um, they were individual cables. So I want to run Wagos. And I may wind up doing something similar for the 
Um, not something similar, but I may redo the cables for the power to the two uh, duet boards and running them with actual FEP cable in the 18 gauge because it's going to be smaller. And because we're running, we're daisy chaining the power. So we're coming off the power supply into the 6HC and off the 6HC um, to power the 3H, the extension board. I think I would much rather, um, rather than double stacking like I did here, um, just actually combine the two FEP cables into one crimp. And that's what uh, Chris was saying Lineal was doing in their harness was, was um, like daisy chaining them physically in the crimp, not running separate crimps, which can lead to a bad connection or a wore out connection. But yeah, we're, we're, we've been using our duet um, wiring guide here as well. For both the um, 6HC, got one for the 3HC somewhere. Here's the 3HC, which we'll get into more. Um, I think all of our motors go to the 6HC, and we'll have some of the outputs and things running off the 3HC if I remember. Tool, yeah, tool heads go off the 3HC. So we'll have three of our tool heads running off the expansion board. And then everything else is running off the main board. Oops, they do our enclosure lighting install. The FDM tools, I've got, once again, I've got three of those made. I need to make two more. Um, and yeah, the motor wires. The big thing is, is the motor wires. Um, they're 256 centimeters, so they're two and a half meters long. You know, that that's that's my issue, is I need long motor wire. And I don't have any, and I don't have enough wire on hand to make them. The one I ordered some, because I really hate doing those uh, DST, uh, what are they, the PH pins? For the motor wires and the ones that are on the SB2209, I hate those things with a passion. Um, so I, I ordered some great Lineo cable from KB3D. If it gets in here, I may make them myself. I'll try. And if I get frustrated, then I'll wait because I ordered some from AliExpress and they'll probably get here in a few weeks. So after after Remurf. And A motor, same thing. Not as long. I just need to make a cable for it. And then the Raspberry Pi, um, it looks like we're powering it five volts through the USB C which means I need to sacrifice a USB-C cable. I, I don't know why we don't just... Sorry, I'm just looking at a connector and it looks weird. Um. Yeah, so that would be the second thing coming off the 5 volt DC converter, which means I need to join those wires as well. So I may be remaking those wires, or at least cutting an end off and recrimping to have the two pairs going in. Yeah. 
Yeah. We, we're pretty good. We, we did as much as we could um, today. We just, I think, finally hit a, a stopping point where I'm just waiting on materials, right? And I need to finish the wiring before I can do anything else. Well, let me rephrase that. I need to finish Now, I was going to say I need to finish the FDM tool dock wiring, but no, I need to finish all the wiring for the tool head because that wiring skirts across and comes down our our vertical chain. There'll be a lot of wires in there. Another reason why I don't see things going through that cable chain. It's not big enough. We'll need to you know, do our wires up. So our wires are going to come up and go into our um, tool head wires here. So power is the shorter one, longer one on the tool head, and the other one is for thermistor. So these will go like this. And once again, these will be joined up with the umbilical from the PTFE tubes as well. So it'll be supported because these will join the PTFE tubes and it will be, the PTFE tubes will be supported with the spring steel wire. We'll have, uh, I can work on putting those three together on the next stream as well. And we'll have our, our vertical pieces done at least for three, Three tool heads. Oh, um, yep. We are making some good progress. Making some good progress, but we are at a standstill now. So, who all? Hey, Mayhem, how's it going? I was checking out your stream last night. I didn't say anything. I was just kind of lurking because I was working on some of the wiring that we've installed today. Um. Once again, I'm going to get some 4040 plot cover or potentially print some out because our um, our Y end stop is right here. I can either run it down the face and under or run it down the inside and under. And I want to put some slot cover right here just to cover that up so that it's it's not visible and it looks nice and clean. Same thing with our B motor wire up front. It's running down this front channel, does a jog around and under, and then comes in. So putting a little bit of slot covering right here will just clean it up and make it a little bit nicer. So long live the lurkers. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, we we made a lot of good progress today. I was able to install all but one cable I made because I'm not, you know, the panel do. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to put a display sitting on the front of here that I can then knock around while I'm trying to do everything else. It will get installed as part of the um uh what you call it, the enclosure. And we'll, um, once we get the rest of the wiring done, we'll start working on the enclosure and we're probably not going to put the entire enclosure on first. We're only going to do the left side panel because we have to have the left side panel done to mount the water cooler. And I want everything left as open as possible when we do the, the commissioning to make sure that I can get in and get to things. As well. So. We'll make sure that it's functioning and that we get our FDM tools lined up so we can do this whole um, alignment using the CXC cameras and everything from Ember prototypes. And then once we get that stuff done, then we can start putting everything else on. But I want to keep access to our cables in case I have to mess with the cable or something like that. But yeah, for now, that's kind of where we're at, what we've done. I'll need to cut these shorter as well and, and 
I'm not going to cut them like right here. I'll leave a little bit of ponytail to them, but uh, not much. Yeah, kind of where we're at. Um, this is my stopping point for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see who is available that we can raid out to. Going up on my control. So we got AZ Pinoy doing Legos. Of course, uh, Maker Deck, Hick Stitch, um, Wana, Vile Mods, Really Git, Full Free Heathen, Jerry 3D, 3D HP. Who all, who all would you like to uh, raid out to today? I know we normally go over to uh, Free Heathen or Jerry on Saturdays. Um, but what do you guys feel about going and watching either Interly Git, who I think is going to be painting, um, or a couple of other people? While mods is going to be building something he normally does on a I believe he's going to be playing a game a few people are playing games I don't know what do you guys feel like doing AZ Pinoy you're there already there you go yeah and he was working on Lego okay Sounds good. I appreciate the uh, suggestion, Pez. And yeah, I was looking at that as well. So let's go over. I'm going to go ahead and get a raid started for AZ Panoy. He's one of the brick builders here on Twitch. Um, so thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, please go with me over to the raid. Check them out. Show them some love. Uh, if you, you know, if, if you get there and it's not your thing, give them five, ten minutes to figure it out. And if it's still not your thing, then go ahead and run. No big deal. Um, or be like Pez and have like six different streams going at the same time. It's all good. Um, but thank you, everybody, for being here. We made a lot of good progress. I will see you guys on Tuesday, and we'll take it from there. Have a good one, everybody. And I will talk to you Tuesday. Bye now.